know what I never get tired of? Talking about the magic wand. Seriously, it's like telling stories about your best friend. I actually think I have more stories about a magic wand than I do my best friend. The magic wand was part of my life long before it was part of the show. And now it's time to make it part of your life too. For more than 30 years, the magic wand has been the trusted toy that women around the world reach for first. In fact, check this. Time Magazine just named the magic wand as one of the top 10 most influential gadgets of all time. We're talking next to the iPod and the calculator. Time Magazine, people. If that doesn't say it all, I don't know what will. The perfectly sized original magic wand delivers amazing power and control and is incredibly simple to use. Just plug in the six foot cord for uninterrupted pleasure. For more information on the magic wand, visit magicwandoriginal.com today or click on the magic wand banner on my website. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. The women know about shrinkage. Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. the live sex with emily podcast at the sexual health expo i'm so i'm so blown away right now i'm so excited um first i have to thank the sexual health expo team i have to thank alec and mo and sarah and everyone for making this an amazing event um and thank you to all my listeners for coming um I have to say that I have a lot of things that I'm going to say, but first, I've just been, my, my mind is blown, like, today, blown away, because I'm, like, doing my show in a box, right? Like, in, my, in, in L.A., and I, I don't meet a lot of my listeners. I just don't meet you guys. You're in the front row, I met all of you. And the, the things that you guys have said to me, and you've come up to me today, and said that how the shows like impacted your life and changed your sex life. And I know this because people email me, but meeting you in person, I'm just completely humbled. And um, I'm like, oh, you're listening, really. Like every time you just say hello and you come out, like, it just feels really good. And I'm so glad that you all came out to support the show. So thank you very much. I love you all. Something just dripped on me, wet, which kind of makes sense that there'd be something wet, like we could turn that into something sexual. Anyone else feel a wet drip? <laughs> Maybe it was just a fantasy. Um, but anyway, thank you for coming. Um, okay, so why are we all here today? Sexual Health Expo. Do you guys know, like, when you think about sexual health, like, what does that even mean? Like, people were asking me, who was I talking? A reporter guys, and she was like, what is sexual health? I'm like, that's a really good question. I mean, it's about being able to ask for what you want, having sex without a lot of shame and a lot of fear and being able to consent, say yes, say no. So I actually found a, like a definition of sexual health and I was like, let me read this. Tell me how you all feel about your sexual health. Okay. Healthy sexuality is a fundamental aspect of being human. Being sexually healthy means being able to comfortably discuss your feelings and values. Initiate sex, say no to sex, Enjoy sexual expression, arousal, and orgasm without fear, guilt, or shame. Okay, so who feels sexually healthy? Yeah? Good. Good. Because I don't even know. I'm like, can I check all those boxes? I mean, pretty much. But the thing is, like, the reason why I think we're all here, though, is because we're all, like, first of all, congratulations, everyone, for just coming. Like, did you tell your friends you were coming, everyone? Good. Did you tell your mom you were coming? Nice. I love that. Because so many people still have this, you know, it's brave. Like, people are like, I'm going to a sex. Like, I told my Uber driver this morning. He's like, should I come? No, but you know what I mean? Like, people are weird about sex. And there's still a lot of people who aren't out there trying to, you know, learn and, and trying to grow and change their sexuality. So, like, whether you came here to learn about, like, blowjob tips or check out some new toys. I just think it's like really brave and cool because 
you know, a lot of us get really stuck in our sexual routines. And I feel like a lot of people, including myself, until I started the show, we don't really like upload a new file to our, to our sexual knowledge, to our, like the, the blueprint for our sexuality and what we know about sex. We don't often update that. Like we kind of learn things in high school or college and we keep having sex the same way over and over and over again. And for a lot of people, they don't even know that there's like new ways to like have sex. Um, and we are not even prepared for all that messiness and the challenges around sex. So that's why I love the expo, because you can all come. It's like non-judgmental non environment, like without shame. We're like all cool. We're talking about it. And so I just think it's awesome. So, and I had really shitty sex education. I don't know about, who has a great sex education? Anybody? Right? Like, no, I, that's where I started my show, because I was like, I know nothing. Like, I was like, I know, like, people would walk around and they're like, I'm having the best sex. I'm, sex is amazing. And I was like, I mean, I'm also like kind of an overachiever and I never think I'm doing as well as I am. But I was like, I have not had the best sex of my life. I, I know this for a fact. And so I did start interviewing people and talking about sex and trying to have better sex. Um, and so I feel like, um, like for me, I was just sort of, I had a lot of, limitations in my head about how I could have sex. Like I thought like I can't have an orgasm during intercourse. I was like, I can't have a G-spot orgasm, which I actually hadn't until my show. And I think a lot of people have these like stories that we tell ourselves about sex when really sex is like, you know, is like expansive and growing. You can like, you know, you guys, if you've listened to, how many of you listen to the podcast here? I love that. Can we all hang out after? Like, I just want to talk. I just want to like cuddle, um, but no, really, it's just cool to see everybody. Like I have a friend I was just talking to and she's been married for like 15 years and she's happy, she like loves her husband and she's like, you know, Emily, when I met him, she's like, I feel like our sex life is kind of weird lately and like what I want has changed and she said, when I met him, she said, I, like, I didn't like soup and now like I like soup. And I think I want things sexually that like, I didn't really want before. And as you know, if you listen to the show, and, and we're also doing a live podcast now, so people are listening, is that we don't like, really think that these things are gonna change and we don't know how to um, talk about them. So, and I get 100 questions a day, and like 99 of those questions are like a variation on this theme. Like people wanna know, is it normal that this is happening? And a lot of these questions I realized I was thinking about what I was gonna say is like, Emily, am I normal? Like, is this okay that I have these desires or that I, or is it normal that I've been with my partner for six years or 20 years and I don't wanna really have sex as much or we want different things. And I'm like, there's no such thing as normal when it comes to sex. And if there is, like, first of all, I wouldn't wanna be normal. Like, I don't even know what that means. So I'm never gonna answer and say, yes, you're completely normal. You know, but also it's like, who cares? Like, it's not like there's a sexual police that's gonna come like knocking at your door and be like, sorry, excuse me, that is just so not normal. Like, you're so weird that you're like tying your partner up and like using one of these flogging things. Have you guys checked out all the great products here? You know, it's like, it's not gonna happen. So, and I am even going back to school again and I'm taking a, um, you guys have been listening to this Somatica sex coaching that I'm doing therapy training and even I'm realizing like, I don't, like that's what I read sexually healthy, I was like, do I do all of that? I mean, pretty much, even I'm like the expert, I'm still learning. So in my somatic therapy, I realized like, you know what? I ask for what I want, but maybe not every time. And maybe sometimes I'm still thinking about my partner more than myself a little bit, like a lot better than I was. So all I'm saying is even if you feel like, you know, sex is pretty good or it's okay, like always just remember there's just so much, it's like peeling back the layers of the onion. There's always so much more to learn to grow and you can get so much better like even after today you know so hopefully you're all going to leave here armed with just barrels of knowledge so the last thing i want to say before i bring up my guests because today's show i'm going to be interviewing two of the people here and uh, we've got a special announcement but one of the most dangerous phrases in the english language is we've always done it this way 
So think about that. So if you, if you feel that way about your sex life, you're like, this is how it is. We've always done it this way. It's just a dangerous place to live. So that's what my podcast is about. That's what this show is about, expanding your mind. And so, uh, yeah, thank you all for coming. So let me tell you about the show today. We are going to have two guest experts and then a third that is going to help me make a really special announcement. And then we're going to be taking your questions. So the first guest we have is Brandon B., He's teaching a better blowjobs class. Did you guys see he taught it beforehand? We're gonna to be touching on some of that and then going to the next level of blowjobs. And my second guest is Tina Horn of the podcast, Why Are People Into That? And she's teaching a, a class here called Digital Dispatches, how to sext, Skype, and swipe your way to satisfaction. That's Tina Horn. I mean, cause sexting is like confusing sometimes. I feel like, like I can dirty talk, but then taking into sexting has been like a whole thing. And I get questions about it all the time too. So we might even do like an improv sexting thing. Like I want her to teach me IRL. That's gonna happen. Um, and another thing is, this is Sexual Confidence Month at Sex with Emily. We decided like, yes, there's back to school, but we're talking about back to sexual confidence. And so just remember this, if you, you know, cultivating confidence in your life is the most important work you can do. And sexual confidence is about releasing all those insecurities you have around sex, asking for, you want, asking for what you want, and understanding your body and knowing what you want. So like you still have another few days left in September, you're welcome to take sexual confidence into October, probably into the rest of your life, that's cool. So I just wanna like say thanks everyone for playing along with us this month and um, thank you for being here. So I'm gonna call up Brandon B. Brandon, are you here? Let's talk blowjob. Hi, Brandon. Hi, how was your blowjob class? It was great. You know, I, I could talk about blowjobs for apparently all day long because uh, I was looking at my time and I was like, wow, that went really quick. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's a good feeling. Because sometimes I'm like, ah, 57 minutes left. No, but that's awesome. Yeah. I heard it was a great class. I heard people learn things. So Brandon, tell me about, so you are... From the Pleasure Chest. Yeah, I'm the manager of the West Village location. Okay. And you teach classes and you... Yeah, I, I primarily teach the blowjob class. I teach the uh, blowjobs and beyond, which is our basic class, and then also the advanced blowjob class, which if you were here for the better blowjobs was like a portion of that class. Uh, it's really, uh, it's less about like blowjobs specifically and more about how to use the full body experience to participate in a blowjob in uh, different and creative ways. Okay, so, but did you start off with like basic blowjob or you're like forget that we're just moving into full body <laughs> uh no i started with the basic blowjob class and then i uh, did extensive research okay and then i uh, was able to do the more advanced one blowjob is like one of my favorite topics oral sex favorite topic totally yeah. right it's a lot of fun i mean it's a, a lot of i think it's a very uh, uh it gives people a popular permission to have fun with sex versus like if you're talking about beginner anal play people are a little less excited to right. you know, express themselves about that yeah, anal play is a good time, but trickier to kind of get into. But let's talk about blowjobs real quick. No, a August was anal sex month. I talked more. I'm like, can we not talk about anal sex for yeah. at least a month? It I mean, is. you didn't know that, so it's okay that you brought it up. In October, I want to talk about it again. Okay, but tell me about, like, your basic blowjobs, and then we're going to get into using your full body with the blowjob. Basic uh, blowjob tips. Blowjob well, I mean, a lot of people uh, are actually, not everybody here, I'm assuming because we just had the class, but a lot of people are really surprised when I say how important lubricant is. You know, lubricant is so essential when it comes to giving blowjobs because uh, the spit in your mouth is just so thin and dry, it doesn't last very long. I know. And then our, our hands, you know, we're doing so much with our hands, especially here in New York, you know, we're on the go, we're grabbing the pole, you know, that we just want to make sure that we're uh, keeping our hands uh, lubricated, soft, supple, and so lubricant is really important for sure. I'm a huge fan of lube. Yeah. Do you know what like my number one mission in life? What's your number one mission? I think it's number one. Yeah, I was thinking, is it two? Number one is that I would like a lube on every nightstand oh. in America. If not the, we'll start with America, yeah. but the world. Because people still think that lube is like some people, not in our sure. worlds. <laughs> not, not us. Not here. <laughs> but they're like, lube, why? They're like, I don't need lube. This is what happens when I bring up lube to people that are not in this room are like you guys know they're like I get wet enough like I don't need lube we don't need lube I'm like 
it's not about needing. Like, I get it. Like, it, it enhances. It enhances any sexual experience. Yeah. Why don't people get that? I don't know. I mean, I think when you phrase it in things that they can relate to, like, yeah, you don't need shoes to walk to the bodega, but otherwise you're walking your bare feet on a New York sidewalk, and that's, you know, maybe that's not as one. ideal as if you were just wearing some flip-flops even, you know. Right. It just enhances it. It's like people are like, why do I need sex toys? It's, it's an it's a s assistance with the process. Right. And... For so many women and men, like the studies show that, like when you add, and I'm not saying you just slather your body in lube, although maybe you do think that in the next, yes. it, but, yeah. but even just for sex, like a few, like you can't imagine what like a few little dribbles of lube, like on your clitoris right before sex or masturbation, like a few drops will do. Like it's like turbo, like it just feels better. It just does. Yeah. And I, I it will increase your ability to orgasm if that's your goal. It just feels better. I think a lot of people that we hear coming into the pleasure chest are just concerned that they'll begin to need it and have a dependency upon it. So what? I'm just yeah. kidding. I got it. <laughs> I can't leave the house without my lube. It's like, so that I, I think I have a caffeine and a lube addiction. Do you think that's okay? Uh, well, well, I know uh, uh, System Joe just released a couple of new flavors of their lubricant. Oh my God, they have the Everyone gelato. Everyone has caffeine in it. You have two birds with one stone. <laughs> exactly. No, you're right. They have like the 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 caramel macchiato, macchiato, the gelato lube. Yeah. Right. It's amazing. Okay, so back to blowjobs. Um, what else? Uh, like uh, you yeah. mentioned, like just ask, like what do you want? Uh, we have something at the store, the pleasure chest over there, called the a yes no maybe list, where you actually sit down and have a conversation about what somebody is actually interested in experiencing versus what maybe they just don't what like something that's off the table. Because the worst thing that can happen in the bedroom is you do something to your partner that they just don't like, that maybe they're uncomfortable with. And so you have a conversation where you actually establish, okay, don't worry, this isn't going to happen, but I am going to try to make sure that these things happen. So ahead of time, you're like, fill this out? Yep. Like during for, before foreplay, like how does that work? No, well, we call it like a sex date, like where you're not going to have this. sex on it, but you like discuss what your sex is Can going you, to Can you like, like email it to them ahead of time? Yeah, I mean, like, we're in the digital out. age for sure. <laughs> So it's like, what's on this list, for example? Yes, no, maybe. Well, on ours, we have a lot of different things. I but want like for, this list. For blowjobs, like maybe, for instance, there's playing with testicles. Some people are really sensitive yes. about their testicles being played with. Some people like it but don't know how to ask for it, you know? Uh, maybe somebody is into a little bit more, like, a BDSM-y stuff, like tie me up or let me tie you up or stuff like that, you know? Uh, it's so really, you kind of have your blueprint for how to have sex beforehand. It's, it's a map for pleasure, basically. Okay. So you got the map for pleasure down. And then you have a penis, and then, or you don't, but you have, you're borrowing a penis, you're using a penis to give a blowjob, and then what? So you find out what they want. Uh, so you know what they want, you're using lubricant, your hands are clean and everything. The next part is like enthusiasm, like you actually have to want to do it. If you're treating it like a literal job, then it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna feel good for either partner because if you don't want to be there, the other person doesn't want to feel like they're forcing you to do this. You know, nobody's ever like received a blowjob that the other person wasn't 100% consented to and been like, wow, this is awesome. You know, it's just not mentally connecting with the person either. And what I found is I hear from so many women like, I just don't like it. Like, I don't like the taste, I don't like the smell, like, or I don't know what I'm doing. And so again, going back to sexual confidence, I think when you're saying like you have to be enthusiastic, people can kind of learn to become more enthusiastic if they're not. Like, because again, if we're releasing a lot of our shame and fears and like stigmas we have around sex, like you can learn to be like, you know, confident in your ability to like give a killer blowjob to appreciate it and worship, you know, the penis that you're sure. with and not be so afraid of it. But like, it's kind of like changing your mindset. Yeah, well, I think confidence stems from desire combined with uh, information. Whereas when people like have a desire to do something but they don't know how, they don't have the confidence to do it, versus when they want to do something and they have the information, right. that's where confidence comes into play. Because now you're like, okay, now I can get my feet wet, so to speak. And that's get true. There. You need the information. Yeah, That's true. Sure. So that's what you do. You're right. Because people are like, I want to do it, but I don't know how. And I think that's the other thing that stops a lot of people. They're like, I'm just, I hear from women all the time, and then they're like, I'm bad at it. Like, I don't think I give good right. jobs. I mean, like, and how... How are you supposed to know how to please how are you each supposed person? To, right. <laughs> just ask them. What do you like? All right, let's do that. Right. But people are like, I don't even know how to ask. And then some people also feel comfortable saying what they like. They're like, I don't really know. Well, I guess maybe guys are know it. Yeah. I feel I like mean, from women a lot, they're saying, I don't know how to tell them what I want when I want oral sex. Right. I mean, that is sort of the catch-22. Like, 
say t to tell people like ask for what you want and then the person's like all right well i don't know what i want you know because you haven't really tried it or anything but there's also i mean if you look at movies and tv uh, people go home with each other in the movies and just have amazing sex all the yeah, time. Yeah, that doesn't happen. I mean... Every once in a while, maybe. Every once in a while, but let's be honest. Like, how often do you just go home with someone and it's, like, the most of it? Because you don't know each other. You're not asking. You're not... Yeah. I mean, you can have an amazing one-night stand. I've done podcasts on that. You can listen, but it's not as easy. Yeah. Okay, so, better blowjob. So, you talk about using your full body. Full body experience means... Full body blowjob experience. Incorporating other parts of your body and the other person's body as well, you know. Okay. Uh, restraining Talk to me somebody, about like maybe engaging the nipples. I talked in my Better Blowjobs class about uh, prostate play specifically, as well as electro play, which people hear electro play and immediately tense up thinking that they're literally going to be electrocuted. There's a lot of fun, topical, electrical toys that just, it changes the sens sensation. It's not lubrication, it's not vibration, it's electricity. And it's right. just really intense. It's a I, different sensation, but it feels, it, it's, yeah. It's like, just try it. It's fun. I you can like try everything once. Try it at the Pleasure Jazz booth. We got the demo of it. Oh, you do? You, they, yeah. you guys go try it at the Pleasure Jazz. If you haven't tried this kind of stimulation, it, it's cool. It's, I know, it feels yeah. good. It's sexy, okay. it's fun. It is fun. Okay, so you tell me to use your, like, so, but you wouldn't just dive into that, would you? Yeah, it's definitely not like a first date thing. Like, you wouldn't pull out your neon wand and be like, all right, you know, right. let's get to know each other. Um, but I mean, that's, again, stemming from a conversation. Like, hey, so I'm interested in this. Would you like to try it as well? You know? Okay. So what's on the yes, no, maybe list then, besides like testicles? Like, is this like, what would you say like? The questions that people ask the most about is uh, one, prostate stimulation in conjunction with a blowjob. Uh, two is uh, where on the penis does somebody actually feel pleasure? A lot of people assume the shaft is the most pleasurable part of the penis. It's actually the glands yeah. or the yeah. head of the penis. You know, and a lot of people just assume oh, you've seen porn where the shaft is getting right. a lot of attention. and there's more of it there. Yeah. <laughs> like, but that's the main jam. Exactly, right. yeah. Um, and just, like, really, like, knowing the anatomy and, like, where it's pleasurable, uh, uh, places on the body that can feel sensation while a blowjob's happening that isn't genital-focused, you know? you can, We have a lot of parts of our body that feel right. really good. So why would you just, like, focus only on the blowjob portion of it when you can be doing other things as well, which would make the pleasure sensation sort of full body? Okay, yeah. good. I love this. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, totally. So Thank they you. can find out more about you. You're going to stay up here because I'm bringing okay. up Tina in a minute, but where can everyone find you? I've got... Um, Pleasure Chest. We have a Twitter account, Pleasure Chest NY. Uh, Instagram, Pleasure Chest NY, or PleasureChest.com. You can see our listing for upcoming free workshops that we do weekly in Los Angeles, New York, and in Chicago. Yeah, because you guys, I know this is two days of like awesomeness, but if you want to go to a night class, you guys teach stuff every like a few nights a week or one yeah, night a week? Yeah, I'm doing the beginner blowjob class on October 5th in our Upper East Side store. So that'll be fun. Awesome. Okay, everyone, let's take a quick break and I'll be right back. You know what's so great about sex toys? They don't get jealous. They just want you to feel good, even if it means they sit one out while you try something new. Well, I was recently introduced to that something new, the rabbit company Lay On Vibrator. I'm here to tell you that this little palm-sized beauty is simply awesome. It's made for external use and features two ears that are perfectly positioned for clitoral stimulation. The whole piece is gently curved to match a woman's natural contour, so it can literally lay on you, as the name suggests. But its ergonomic shape feels so good to hold and move around. You'll find endless different sensations by changing the Lay On's positions. It's whisper quiet and has six vibration patterns. But my favorite feature? The rabbit company keeps the motion in the ears, not the handle. No more numb hands from the transfer of vibration. It's really amazing. Like all rabbit company products, the Lay-On is 100% body safe, features easy to use controls, and has a five-year warranty. To order your Lay-On, visit therabbitcompany.com or click the rabbit company banner on my website. Hey, why not? Lay it on today. All right, everyone. Hello. Hi. How are you guys doing? This is so weird. It's so fun. I just want to like talk. We're going to talk to everyone in the audience in a second. Um, thank you for being here at the Sexual Health Expo during our live podcast. This is awesome. Okay. I am now, thank you, Brandon B., blowjobs for all. Now bringing up Tina Horn. Tina is teaching a class today called Digital Dis uh, this weekend, Digital Dispatches, how to sext, Skype, and swipe your way to satisfaction. 
Yay, Tina. Hi, I am so excited to have learned about caffeinated lube. Also, my oh, Joe. two it's of so my good. favorite things. Right? Yeah. I feel like I feel like like the universe was looking out for me today by letting me learn that information. <laughs> like, what else do I need? I'll just like be chugging lube, which I've done. It tastes really good. They send us like cases to the office. So does it like absorb through? Well, anyway, we'll, we'll talk science. No, later. I wish, but that's a good idea. I don't know <laughs> if it does. I don't know if it tastes like caffeine or there's actually caffeine in it, and then I could sort of somehow, right? If it absorbs into my skin, let's test that out. Is it after. like a coffee enema? Anyway, we can. Anybody wants to talk about coffee enemas later? We can talk later. about coffee enemas after. Um, but <laughs> Tina, thank you for being here. Please tell me people where you can. Um, tell me about yourself. Okay. What do you want to know? <laughs> No, just tell me everything. Okay. Um, tell me what you do. You have a book, you have a podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm a writer uh, and a producer and teacher. Um, I host and produce a podcast called Why Are People Into That? It is about sex, kink, gender, and love, so I feel like maybe some people here might You might be, be interested. into a little kinky stuff, right? You can find out more. Is that like sex robots? I don't know. They're like doing construction. It's a good day Wherever to do construction. Wherever there are, if there are sex robots here, I, I wanna, I wanna see them. Um, so uh, yeah, so you can find out more at whyarepeopleintothat.com, uh, and I am also a, a writer, a journalist, um, and I've written two books. Um, my most recent book is called Sexting, and it's, um, it's about sexting. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay, so how <laughs> did you get to be an expert in sexting? Because I feel like you cannot get laid these days unless you can sext. Well, I have been teaching dirty talk. Or have talk. a relationship, yeah? Okay. What's that? Or have a, like anything, like, like everyone's sexting, what do I do? It's like I get these questions all Everybody's the time. doing it. Um, yeah, so I've been teaching dirty talk classes in various venues for 10 years. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I got my start doing professional BDSM um, and, uh, and porn. And I was uh, like, I always had people asking me, like, how do you always know what to say, all the filthy shit that you yeah. say, like How where do does it know? come from? And I'm like, you know, I have a theater background, I have a literature background, like it's like as natural to me as like math is to somebody else. Like you just like came out of the womb being instead of mommy, you were like cock was your first word. Is that what happened? Kind of? It's More okay. or less, yeah. yeah. Pussy, I don't know. <laughs> I definitely have been saying pussy for a long you time. You say that. Yeah, um, and uh, I've been saying it, all kinds of stuff. Um, but so, uh, yeah, so, so I did that for um, a really long time and I teach um, workshops in, in Dirty Talk and, um, you know, after everybody asked me to sort of like get down to the nitty gritty of, yeah. of how so to do it. So what is the nitty gritty of Dirty Talk? Like what people are like, uh, uh, they're like, I want to do it. Like, that's great. Keep going. Like, People well, are confused by it. I would say that the, for me, that the nitty gritty of dirty talk is actually the same as the nitty gritty of sexting. It's just a different medium. Uh, and of course there are different mediums for sexting and we can talk about that. But I think it's really about developing your own style. Um, and when I say style, you know, part of what I'm talking about like in terms of fundamentals is what Brandon was talking about with the yes, no, maybe list. I'm a huge proponent of the yes, no, maybe list. I think that filling that out for yourself, um, you know, filling it out weekly, because who knows what has changed, like right. filling or it out with partners. each partner, right. like, like for if you have multiple partners, like what are your yes, no, maybe lists for multiple partners, because it could totally be different. Um, and really knowing that, and then once you have sort of like that, that, that syntax of dirty talk, of the things that you like, the things that you're maybe a little like meh on, and the things that are absolutely off limits, then you start to develop your own style. And like, I'm a creative person, so I think of it in terms of like, rising action and climax so, and denouement and that right. kind of thing. But like, if you're more of like an engineer, like every, whatever kind of mind you have, you, you have like finesse for something in your life. So I feel like applying your personality and your expertise to like right, your like, dirty talk, your sexual communication like style. Don't try to like pick up someone else, like have your own, like then it won't sound like you. I mean, you can get ideas from other people. I'm also a big proponent of getting ideas from porn. I'm like all about porn and I think that uh, it gets a bad rap, um, but I think it can teach you a lot of creativity and union. I also think that the idea of like talking like a porn star gets a bad rap. Like, there's a reason that they say those things. They're professionals. They're artists. Those are the things that work. Those are the things that turn them on. That they know 
turn other people on. Right. So. Okay. So, so how do you know when it's the right time to sex in a relationship? Like, I think sometimes people prematurely sexed. Like, anyone here dating online? Online dating? Right. People they've never met you, like, you know, hey, so, like, can't wait to see you naked. We're like, I can't even, I don't know I'm going to see you for coffee. Like, how the hell, what, what? Totally. So that's, like, where the finesse comes in, right? So anybody that is, like, cold sexting. Uh, <laughs> don't cold sex don't or cold, cold sex. Call. Just hot, uh, think hot sex. Um, yeah, anybody that is doing that is not practicing any kind of finesse. They're not interested in, like, volleying back and forth with someone, right? They, like, probably are not even fully, like, seeing your personhood, right? They're not like, at they're, all. You're like, you saw my picture and now you are, you know, Yeah, and people, me, people are entitled. There's all kinds of reasons that people do it. But I think that if, if your objective is to, like, turn yourself on, turn your partner on, use language and use technology to create a better and hotter connections and deeper connections with your partner and like deeper satisfaction for yourself then um then i think that really thinking about like what your style is and what your finesse is and also you know to like use a car metaphor i don't drive but i hear that people understand car metaphors like you don't if you like go if you start in fifth gear you'll stall that's what happens in cars right i have no okay, idea cool. i don't drive stick <laughs> but people like cars at least you didn't use a sports analogy. I, I try to be butch sometimes, suck. you know. I'm like, yeah. I don't fucking know which ball <laughs> that game that's to. So you're saying, because I said, like, you can't get laid if you can't sex. And what I mean by that is I always say that foreplay starts after the last orgasm. Mm. And for example, what I mean by that is if you're in a relationship or you're just banging someone, whatever it is, doesn't matter, that it helps to kind of keep that energy going until you see each other again. To Absolutely. send, like, it could just be like a recall of what happened. Like, that was so hot the way you were, like, totally. kissing my neck. Yeah, getting week. more mileage out of Getting more of mileage out of yeah. what happened, but also, yeah. like, you know, you could be sitting there, you're like, oh, I haven't seen him in a few days. Maybe we can't see each other, but, but I can say something that will, like, connect us. And also, it could be a recall of something that happened, but yes. it also could be, like, I want to do this next time I see you. It's an, also a good version of, like, kind of the yes, no, maybe, but in a sense of laying out what you're into, because a lot of people have a hard time with the face-to-face -face explaining to their partner what they want. So if you can like lay it out in a sex, mm -hmm. be like, mm -hmm. next time I see you, I'm going to do this to you. Totally. One of the things that I talk about in my book, Sexting, The Grown-Up's Guide to Getting Dirty Digitally, which is for sale at the Pleasure awesome. Chest over here, um, <laughs> um, is like to be a, like a little bit of a rhetoric nerd, a language nerd, like just like thinking about past, present, future. So like, can do you do you want to like play with this a little yeah. bit? So uh, can I get somebody somebody in the audience? Can you yell out a sex act like a sex verb, like fuck, but something maybe like more specific? Anything, Bl yeah. Suck. Cool. Great. Suck. So we'll let's play with say, that. so let's say. Like the scenario that you were setting up, I really like that. That sexting starts with. The, uh, like with foreplay starts after the last order. Foreplay starts at, right, and, and sexing can be really great foreplay. So, so let's say like, um, uh, like you, uh, you just like gave someone like really great blowjob because totally you went did, to Brandon's actually. class, yeah, right. and you were like, oh, I have all these new techniques. Can I try them out on you? And you know, and so like it goes really well, right? So let's say that your partner that you just gave that great blowjob to, you guys part ways mm -hmm. and then like as you're like you know getting on the train or getting in your car or getting home um you get a sex or you get a text message and it says you sucked me right so that's talking about the past right now you could embellish he could uh he or she they could embellish on that and say you sucked me so good the way you sucked me was so amazing mm -hmm. i can't wait for you to suck me again can you think of any other te like past past um, texts that you would like to get? <laughs> Suck me. Um, you sucked the chrome off my cock. You sucked the. Chrome. <laughs> Is that a saying? It is now. You're kidding. <laughs> Have you guys ever heard that? She. Isn't there a saying like she sucks? The what is it? Off a trailer hitch. <laughs> Sorry. Something like that. It no. works. That's hot. I like Thank that. You. That's unique. I I've never yeah, heard I, that before. I am unique. I did. I don't know. Um. I'm not normal. It's totally fine. So, so, so how about like, like, 
Uh, I'm trying to think of one. I've, yeah, something like that. So, so then oh. an example of so that's 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 past, right? So that's like getting more mileage out of something that's like already right. happened, right? I can't stop thinking about the way you sucked me. I've never been sucked like that before. Right, and so you took me in so deep the way you sucked me. Right. Keep keep it up. I know. Um, do you do you have one? Uh, I, I like what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I've done this before. Okay. So, so when it comes to present tense with dirty talk, right? That w this is when you're when you're in the room with someone, when you're narrating what's happening, right? People right. Th people say that they don't know what to say when it comes to dirty talk, but you can always describe what's happening, and you can be as fundamental as you're sucking me, I'm sucking you. I mean, if you're sucking someone, you know that might be like you right. might, might be full, which is hot sometimes. Um, uh, you know, but it can also be you're you're sucking the cr the chrome off my cock. <laughs> the chrome off my cock. My God, you're yeah. you're the be you're the best cock sucker in the entire yeah, world. Exactly. This is the best blowjob I've ever had in my right. entire life. Hyperbole is fine. Nobody is fact checking your dirty talk. Yeah, like, you totally said that last fine. week. Like, yeah, you, you had can, a good blowjob last you week. You can say okay. you can say this is the best blowjob of my life to every single person that ever sucks your cock. I am giving you permission right now. It is fine. I thought that they were telling the truth. I mean, but I really they are was in the, the best moment, Emily. You no, know, like the, 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 the in the moment, in the moment, it's true. Yeah, okay, I think we all okay. know how that I, feels. It helps my ego. Yeah. So, but when it comes to sexting, you know, for the most part, we 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 sext with people, we text with people, we communicate mediated by technology when they're at least in the other room. I mean, you know, or like uh, maybe in another borough, or maybe on an, on another continent, or maybe eventually, like you know, we'll sex people like on Mars on the moon, right. right? So, so you're you're separate from them, but you can still use the present tense of. Dirty talk, right? By basically saying it. like, uh, like I'm like, oh, I'm touching myself, thinking about how hot that blowjob was yesterday. Right. But or exactly. Like, that's the best when you. So the for, like you recall mm -hmm. like what had happened. Um, yeah. Like what were like, saying? Or, or like I can future, like I can't if, wait to to do it again. Like, or, yeah. Again? Well, yes, exactly. And you know, you can also if you're like still in the bed where you like had this encounter, you know, you can be like, oh, I can still smell you in I the get sheets. To taste I can you. I can still taste you in my mouth, right? Like exploring all of the senses. It might sound cheesy, but like, you know, you've it got It just gets the visual. Like if you are whispering, you're like I want to I want to be top of mind for this person. Like I I'm an, you know, attracted to him and I want to be thinking about me all week long. Or until we see each other again, just to drop these little things, you know, and just let them know that you're still thinking about them in a very descriptive, hot, sexy way. And in, and in terms of future, just to keep things moving, you know, um, keep it, it moving. A fu future can be seduction. It can be a threat, you know, like a friendly threat. Like, yeah, yeah, like I, you don't even know what the fuck is going to happen to you when I get my hands on you tonight. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, okay. You know, like, or like I can't, I, you know, and it can be romantic too. Like sexting can be like really primal, but it can also totally be romantic and be like, like I oh, wait. I can't, yeah, like, oh, I, like, I can't wait to, like, I can't wait to smoke Kiss tonight. Your neck, I can't, like, yeah, exactly. Put rose petals on your bed. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Wah, I'm drawing wah. a bath. I can't wait till you get here. Yeah, totally. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you for that sexting. I mean, when's your class? It's tomorrow at one. Okay. Ten. Okay. So everyone check out Tina's class. I want you guys to hang out here. Okay. We're going to take some questions from the audience now. Questions? Yay, hi. Um, my name is Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Hi. Hi. Oh, no. He's going to be really mad at me for asking this question. Do it. Um, It'll change your life. Um, I have a question about having sex with someone who might have a bigger penis than normal. Okay. Why would you I'm so friggin' psyched right now. Are you kidding me? Um, like, certain positions, like, they're kind of, like, painful. Oh, my gosh. Everybody's right. looking at me. Um, they're kind of painful, so I was wondering for like tips for that. Absolutely, yes, yes. So, yes, repeat the question is, Amanda, Amanda, is having sex with somebody who has a larger penis than normal? Is that what you said? Lar a large penis. And a lot of times, I get a lot of these questions that it just, it can be painful, or it can hurt. Like a lot of the, your go-to positions, it doesn't feel as good, or it's more painful. So definitely use lube. Do you guys use lube? Like a lot of lube? Caffeinated lube? <laughs> no, no don't, don't, don't try that yet. Um, and you just, you definitely want to, I mean, woman on top, when you're on top, you definitely have more control of like the depth and then the movement, um, the penetration, the speed, all that stuff, because then you can control it. 
I know that doggy style can be painful. Is that what you're? I did actually just yeah, wrote. That's, that's what. That's what. The that's problem. the one. But it's a good one. It just. It's a good fun. problem to have. It's fine, honey, because we. I actually just wrote. I write for Glamour, and I just wrote a column on this other day, and there are variations that you can do to doggy style. For example, like lying on your stomach, like lying flatter on your stomach, which so like if you're on all fours, like typical, like that could hurt more. Like that can go deeper. So if you're lying flatter, that can help. If your your hands are down and you're like your bum is back back up more, that could feel better. Also, lying on the um, are you talking about particularly for doggy style? Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Okay, mm-hmm. lying flat and then um, using lots of lube, going slow and not and your your bum's more in the air. Or if you're on the bed with your body over the bed and your butt sticking over the edge of the bed, can feel a lot better as well. Do you guys have any more tips for that? Does everybody know what reverse cowgirl is? Speaking of things I've learned from porn. Um, reverse cowgirl is basically doggy style of the, of the bottom on top. <laughs> or, you know, like, you know, the, the, the person being penetrated is on top. So everything that they say about, um, about like the person on top being like in, in control is true of reverse cowgirl or reverse cowboy um, where you can like control the depth and speed but also still get like all of the really like delicious sexy like naughty things what or or like uh, where it hits in your anatomy um, for doggy style but you have more control that would be my tip I'm just gonna be the mom voice here and say have you been drinking enough water because <laughs> Hydration is a really important part of sex. Uh, it affects your muscles, your joints, your general mental uh, sense of comfort. Uh, so that is something just to keep in mind too. Whatever you ate that day, and if you haven't had enough water, can be contributing to just physical pains as well. I also want to say that spooning, I know like spooning position is also great too because then you're also more in control. Slipping it in, yeah. So like it can feel really good, but you can also, cause you gotta, and you gotta just, you know, you just gotta go slower and usually, I'm telling you, and spooning is kind of a way that it can feel just as good. People think it's just kind of like a morning sex thing, but it actually can feel great and not cause you as much pain. Thank you so much. Thank you for asking. Um, I, I have a question. One of my female friends told me uh, recently that girls don't really like being complimented so much on their physicality. Like, she said that it's much more meaningful to a girl if you tell her that she's smart or that she's funny or something like that. And any kind of compliment that has to do with her physicality, she views as insincere, and girls don't want to hear it. My question is, is that like the main consensus upon women, or is that maybe an unorthodox opinion on the matter? I don't think there's a main consensus among women, first of all. (laughs) I wish there was, it'd be so much easier. Um, I think that a lot of women, I mean, here's what I hear. I hear like if you're like on a dating app or something, you just meet someone and you walk up to me and like, you're so hot, you're so beautiful. So like, yeah, I've heard that, like, you know, so it might be that if you don't really know the person and you're just going out to them, that might be kind of disconcerting and make them uncomfortable. But I think for women, like if you, I mean, are very more specific in your compliments, like, God, like I, I love your, you know, your dress, like is really yeah, like a beautiful dress. Or you look at their eye. I always say this about the eyes, for example. Like I've had guys say, like, you have pretty eyes. And then I've guys say, God, you have these really cool rings around your eye, like these dark rings around your eye. It's like more specific to her. And it's like something that you know, or like I like the way you laugh, I find that really sexy. So things that rather than just like, you're hot, cause that's just like, I wanna bang you, so I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna make you feel good. So, I mean, I like when a guy like thinks I'm attractive, but the more like tailored and specific you can make it to her, I think the better. Another question, hi. So I had a question about, you mentioned porn. So I just read a very long online article about how uh, young, boys today who are inundated with porn have all these different expectations about sex and how the young girls probably high school or so have these unrealistic expectations about sex acts or whatever and you did mention that porn is a good kind of bar for that so i just want to hear your comments about okay yeah i mean i don't think yeah i mean you're the question is if if porn is how it's impacting young kids men in particular no, it's, it's more along the lines of um, 
you're saying kind of how it's a good tool or it's a good sex tool, does it actually set wrong expectations or is, is it valuable? Is it a bad thing? I'm yeah, sure. I mean, I think it's a double-edged sword. I think that porn is great for, you know, fantasy, you know, for, for masturbation. Um, technically, porn, I don't think, is not a great way for people to, to learn how to have sex. Technically, if you're like, I've never had sex before and I'm just going to watch porn. Because sometimes I'm watching it, I'm thinking like, He's nowhere near her clitoris. Like, there's no way she's having this orgasm. Or some guys have sex for the first time. They're like, why didn't she bring three friends and squirt all over the place? Like, it's not realistically set up to how we really have sex. So that's what I think. And you, Tina, would you like so to... So here's the, here's the comparison that, that I like to make. Wow, cars again. I guess I'm just talking about cars. So um, I, do kn- I do know how to drive, and I, I, um, I took uh, driver's ed, and I had to take a test in order to get a driver's license. And I've also seen the movie The Fast and the Furious. And I don't drive like the movie, the Fast, like they do in the movies, all of the movies of The Fast and the Furious. I enjoy watching those movies. I enjoy the adrenaline. I enjoy the excitement. I enjoy the fantasy, as you said. I enjoy, like, seeing the sort of, like, exaggerated, outsized adventure created for my consumption by professionals, but I'm not going to try to, like, drive a car out of a helicopter. I mean, I wouldn't even know where to start, right? So I would would compare porn to The Fast and the Furious, and the difference is that we are not giving people good enough sex education in the way that we give them good driving education and traffic education, right? So um, part of the reason that people don't have a critical awareness of the relationship between the outsized professionally made fantasy of porn and their own sex lives is because we're not educating people enough, especially at a young age. So I have lots to say about this if you want to visit tinahorn.net. Um, I've been writing about this a lot in the media lately, and if you ever want to talk to me about it, I'm, I'm available for that. And um, I hope that the sex education that is happening here is going to change our critical awareness of our, the relationship between, our, between porn and our own sex lives. Do you want to add? Yeah, just, I mean, to echo that, I mean, it, I don't think porn is the issue. You hear that a lot in the political landscape these days, and porn isn't the issue. And in the context of what we're talking about up here as far as, like, education's concerned, you can get inspired once you accept that porn is not, like, a litmus for reality. You can find inspiration within different porn and everything to influence your life in a healthy and positive way. But what's happening on the screen isn't like an instruction manual, you know. So education is definitely very important, especially for young boys like you're talking about there. Thanks, guys. This is awesome. Thank you. I want you to stay up here for my big announcement. Um, Thank you, everyone. Also, I I have a booth here, and I'll be here the next two days. So... I'd love you all to come up and say hi. Um, Thank you to both Tina and Brandon. And now I've got a big announcement. Okay, so we were talking about Joe Lube earlier. Well, the people at Joe asked me to create my perfect lube. And I'm like, wow, like that's like a dream. Like I can build whatever. And now we kind of talked about they might have already made one. But I want to make my own lube. I was like, yeah, I I could probably do that. And I thought... I want your help with this, and so I'm going to invite Seth up here from Joe to explain this. We're all going to make an ideal loop together. Hi. Hi, Seth. Come on up. I'm great. How are you? Good. Let's so, talk about loops. So, so talk- we're excited about this. With you. We're so excited. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you know, as a manufacturer, even though we think we do a pretty good job and we ask some of our consumers what to do, it's great for us to work with someone like you and then for you to go out to your audience so we can really try and find out what matters to consumers. What do they want? Right. Like, what do you guys want in your loom? From everything, like, from the consistency to the container, like, I don't want a screw top on loom. Why do they... Yeah. Who wants to screw up a top in the middle of the set? I got excuse me while I unhinge this. No, you know, everything. Yeah, we get that, that kind of stuff all the time. Though. Like some people want this, some people okay, don't do you want, want that. It. Okay, right. Yeah, so. It's okay if you want that. No judgment. We don't judge here. But right, make your perfect loop. Yeah, and we want to hear everything. I mean, I, I, someone another day talked about like, hey, can you guys put nanobytes inside your loop? They say uh, what? Nanobytes inside your loop. But we don't have nanobite technology. Not but yet. The point being that we want to hear everything, and right. then we'll try and figure out what we can do so that we can produce like the perfect Emily loop. Exactly. Okay. So this is what you have to do. Go to sexwithemily.com slash dream lube. Dream lube. It's all one word. Um, and so, and there's also prizes. 
So there's going to be 10 participants selected randomly to receive packages if they fit. It's like a 10, it's like a five minute survey. And it just asks you your experience with lube and you fill out these little questions and then we're going to like actually create this lube that you can all try. And if you fill out the survey, and you guys send killer packages. Yeah, and we're gonna like, we're gonna give like ten the, big uh, prizes. Like I think it's like a hundred dollars worth of various products to ten of your your people that fill out the survey. So do that on my website, sexwithemily.com/dreamlube, and um, let's do it together. Let's make some killer lube. Yeah, we really, really want to see what can come I'm out. I'm so of it. excited. Um, okay, so the survey is actually live right now through November, and um, check it out. So yeah, so 2017 should be a really interesting year. 2017, watch for the Emily Joe Lou. Thanks, Seth. Thank you. Okay, awesome. All right. Okay, I think that's all we got time for. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you everyone for being at the Sexual Health Expo. And I'm just telling you, please come say hi. Like everyone's like, oh, I don't know if I should say hi. You're changing my life. Like really, a lot of you are telling me your stories about how my show's impacted your life and just seeing you today makes like me feel like I saw, it's saw, it's very humbling and just knows that I'm, it's all worthwhile just meeting you. I don't get to meet people, all of my listeners, so thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting all the exhibitors here. There's amazing stuff, you have to walk around. We'll be here for two days. Thank you everyone for being here and thanks for listening. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. Thank you. I know sanitizing doesn't sound sexy, but you know what's even less sexy? Unclean toys. That's why I'm thrilled to have found a product that was created with your sexual health and enjoyment in mind, the UV from Clean Light Labs. You know when you're settling in for some me time and your favorite toy is missing or dirty or uncharged? That's the worst, right? At first glance, the UV is just a beautiful toy box, but it really solves all three of those common concerns facing sex toy users. Cleaning, charging, and storage. Unfasten its childproof lock, open the lid, and you'll find an innovative ultraviolet cleaning system that has been specifically designed to sanitize sex toys, killing 99.9% .9 of harmful bacteria. Look a little closer, and you'll find a USB charging outlet you can use to juice up your rechargeable toys as they're getting cleaned. The UV is sleek, discreet, and sophisticated, and it's available in two sizes. The Go Play is a smaller box for a single average size toy like a rabbit vibrator or a couple of bullets. It has a built-in battery so your toys can stay charged up even when you're on the go. The Home model is a larger box that can fit a toy as large as a full-size magic wand or multiple regular size toys. It also has three USB ports to keep everything ready to go. And for those toys that need to be plugged into the wall, there's a sealed outlet as well. How smart is that? Both models will be available in October at your favorite adult retailers, but you can pre-order yours today. Just look for the UV banner on my website or visit uvclean.com. That's uvclean.com.